That's it. Well, a very good morning and a very hearty welcome to all attendees and participants here. Uh, respected Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, our esteemed speaker for today, uh, Mr. Shobhita Chatterjee, whose introduction I will be giving shortly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have assembled here with another program of a very different kind. And the title of the program is a groundbreaking program. And it's basically uh, written by, a, on a book written by uh, an internationally acclaimed coach, Mr. Shomit Chatterjee. It's called Faith, a Transformation of Journey from Fear to Power. Now, to tell you slightly about the context in which the book has been written, I will say this, and I'm quoting uh, from Mr. Shomit Chatterjee. The second wave of COVID has been very cruel and experts are predicting a third wave very soon. We have experienced so many deaths during the second wave that people are in a state of intense fear as we realize that the fear of COVID is bigger than COVID itself. Unless this fear is conquered, it is not possible to live a normal life by anyone, leave aside being productive. So what is the way out? It is in this backdrop, the new book titled Faith, Stories and Strategies to Conquer COVID was launched recently, authored by internationally acclaimed leadership coach, Sri Shomitra Chatterjee. The book has presented a life-changing process that he has named the Faith Protocol. That is a set of easy, learnable daily rituals, which if practiced is bound to enhance one's mental and emotional fitness and improve one's mental health drastically. Now on this uh, occasion, I would request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir Professor Shoikat Moitro, under whose leadership all such programs of different varieties are being organized by the College Connect program in order to reach out to a very wide cross-section of stakeholders, the students, the parents, the guardians, the teachers, the different institutions affiliated to our university or even otherwise, and to the general public at large. So I would request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to kindly speak a few words on this occasion, after which we will give a very brief introduction of Mr. Shomitra Chatterjee, our resource person for today's program, and hand over questions to him. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm really, really happy to, uh, to be present uh, in a program where uh, a book entitled Faith will be, uh, uh, will be discussed by the author himself, the Shomitra Chatterjee. The Faith, uh, the title of the book is Faith, and uh, I have gone through this book, and I was present at the inaugural uh, program of this book. It's, and uh, that time, I have seen uh, that uh, the book contains uh, many important messages for these uh, minds, I will not say only young minds, but uh, I believe that uh, from these messages, any person will get a chance for enrichment, enrichment further and also to change the course of life. If, if this, uh, the messages, the doctrines is properly followed, which is uh, already there inside the, in this book. Now, faith means you have to have complete trust and confidence on something and somebody. And who is this, who is this somebody? What is this something? This somebody is none other than you only. You have to have trust and confidence on yourself. And something means the great power which is controlling everything which is the driving force of the entire universe. So if you have ultimate trust and confidence on yourself and on the great power, then you will have enough fuel inside you to overcome all the problems, all the mountains of problems, which may come across in the path of your progress, in the path of your journey. I was present at another meeting a few minutes before, where I was discussing 
the world has already been changed in this particular century. People are talking about VUCA, V-U-C-A. It has become volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And in the last one and a half year, after the COVID pandemic situation broke out across the entire world, the intensity of this VUCA dimension has been enhanced by many fold. And here we need to dig down in our inner strength, we have to leverage the strength, the wisdom of, of all of uh, all of, uh, the uh, persons, uh, all the thinkers, all the wise people across the world. And we have to take inspiration from the story of struggles of different individuals at different adverse situations. Absolutely. And we have and taking inspiration and taking, you know, this uh, information, getting information. We have to keep ourselves enlightened so that the dark path of this volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world can be properly illuminated so that we can see our definite path to, for further progress to move forward. In this book particular, I have seen many case studies have been discussed, many protocols have been discussed, how you can manage yourself. This is the very important thing now, how we are managing ourselves, how we are getting inspiration from the events in and around, how we are motivating ourselves through all these phenomena, through our own action. And if we can do all these things, definitely we will be more contributing for the growth development of not only of us, but also of this uh, of our surroundings, our community, our country. And that is very much required. Now, we need to engage ourselves, indulge ourselves in all these types of protocols, which have been, which will be discussed, when, which have been there, have been written there by Sri Swamitra Chatterjee in this book. And I believe this will be an unique, an unique opportunity to all the participants who are present over here to interact with Mr. Somitra Chatterjee, to validate some of the perception, to clarify some of the confusion. And Professor Sujit Mukherjee from our School of Management Science painstakingly are organizing these types of program, inviting stalwart personalities in digital platform for benefit or enrichment of all the participants, particularly the young mind, the aspiring minds. And I believe the exercise which he is taking on behalf of this university definitely will bear fruit in making many professionals of success uh, in near future who will be really contributing in, for the growth and development of this country. Today, all of us will be eagerly waiting for the deliberation of Mr. Swamitra Chatterjee. And at the end, the students, the participants, not today, the, at present time, we have started to describe all of us as learners. The term student, we are not, uh, we are seldom using. We are now using the term learners. All the learning community members, they will be immensely benefited and uh, with this, I, 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 have a, I have another small piece of suggestion. If possible, collect a copy of this book. This will be of immense help. And I have a copy with myself. And almost I have completed this book. And I, I have uh, my, I, my, myself personally, I believe I, I enriched some of my thought process further. So with this, I would like to conclude. Without further wasting time, I'm requesting 
to Professor Sweet Mukherjee to take this program ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for always showing the way, leading from the front and, you know, being the prime mover in our university and, you know, making a complete difference, complete change in the lives of people that you touch. Thank you so much, sir, for those inspirational words. Before I hand over proceedings to Sri Shobhita Chatterjee, let me put in a brief introduction about the author himself. Sri Shobhita Chatterjee is one of the most sought after leadership, motivational and peak performance coaches in India who has served over 500 organizations, 300 institutions and 6 lakh people with his workshops, seminars and talks so far. He has been the mental toughness coach of all categories of Bengal cricketers and the East Bengal club. Some of the current India superstars in cricket and football are his students. He is also the founder of the 20 year of Dhruv Satya Center for Transformation Private Limited, a leading training and consulting organization headquartered in Kolkata. He is a mechanical engineer from Jadavpur University and has been mentored by Tony Robbins, the number one leadership coach in the world. Shobhita Chatterjee is also an accomplished author and has been covered extensively in the press and the electronic media. He has also been the recipient of the Rotary Award. As far as the webinar of today is concerned, I would hand over proceedings to Sri Shobhita Chatterjee now and he will take over and deliberate about his thoughts and we will have a question answer session at the end of the webinar, as always, where you can ask questions directly to the author. And if that is not possible, you can also send him questions through uh, the chat box, also through the email that we will share with you. And we will be covering this event live, streaming it live on YouTube as well. So there are plenty of options in front of you. Now I hand over proceedings to Mr. Shobhita Chatterjee. Mr. Chatterjee, please. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee, and a thank you very much to Professor Moitro. Uh, you uh, to my very dear participants. Uh, first, let me extend my very deep gratitude to uh, Professor Moitro and Macout for giving me the opportunity to serve such a great university. And uh, I have already always mentioned uh, that when I uh, meet or I listen to Professor Moitro, uh, I get so inspired uh, in a, in a, in a, at a time when uh, we normally see a lot of academic captains, uh, they, uh, the kind of uh, diaspora, the kind of environment that we have in the uh, academic scenario in the country, uh, in my opinion, Professor Moitro is a very, very uh, bright, shining, inspiring role model. So Professor Moitro, uh, I express myself, so please pardon me, I, when I express myself, I uh, do not hold back. So exactly what I feel from my heart, I express. Uh, so that has also been my Guru Shikha. So thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for your very inspiring and very relevant introduction. And uh, I would also like to share that uh, uh, this uh, uh, faith also has given me the opportunity to discover a long lost classmate. Uh, I discovered that Professor Mukherjee, Shujit Mukherjee, and uh, myself, we were classmates at South Point, and we were also year mates at Gadupur. So thank you again, uh, you know, having, uh, and Professor Mukherjee, thank you very much uh, that apart from this, uh, you know, deliberating this webinar, I have discovered such a wonderful friend. Uh, so with this uh, note, let me start my, uh, my webinar. Let me go straight to the presentation. Sir, PPT is visible. Please make it in full view mode, sir. And you are muted, sir. So please unmute, sir. Yeah, can you get me? How I am not able to get it in the full screen. Sir, at the sir, right side bottom, you can see there are uh, three, four options after the zoom plus and minus. 
that is a one hundred percent see at the bottom right corner sir right bottom corner sir yeah yeah but sabo one second yes sir so uh, uh, just beside the hundred percent there is a slide show yes so otherwise you go you can go to the menu bar and menu is there is slide show just a second Why is the toolbar not going down? One second. Just one second. Just give. Sir, you can press F five, sir. Sir, you can press the button F five, sir. Shortcut key. just give me one minute to fix this ओके इट है नीचे नामी तो सो आई थिंक नाउ इट इज क्लियर यस सर यस वीडियो इज वीडियो इज क्लियर एवरीवन यस हेलो यस सर इट इज विजिबल सर ओके सो नाउ लेट यू अगेन ओके और इट्स लाइक नॉट वर्किंग Then you have to double click on the slides. Just a second. Sir. Just a second. Okay. Okay. So uh, now uh, this book uh, is uh, based on this particular book, as you see, uh, faith and the uh, inspiration uh, that. Uh, i received that got uh within me during my covid experience which uh you know uh, i'll be sharing uh, in the course of my talk uh, now by the way this uh, uh, uh book is also currently available in amazon and flipkart now i quickly uh, like to uh, talk about uh, the flow of my talk so my flow of the talk will uh, cover first is the how the fear of covid is bigger than covid insights from my own covid experience uh, the importance of faith to overcome fear why development of mental and emotional fitness is paramount today learning some from some uh, great lives who overcame ins uh, insurmountable odds and triumphed in their life what strategies they used uh, the uh, and practical tools uh, to develop mental and emotional toughness and uh, the faith protocol it is a set of sops standard operating procedures uh, which i have devised uh, i am going to talk about it and how to install the faith protocol in our lives what action uh, must you take uh, so this is how the flow of my talk will uh, go and uh, uh, so the next so let me talk about why is it again effect our article is correct so i can uh so uh, uh just a few words about our organization uh, we are a 20 year old uh, iso 9001 2015 certified organization national award winning training and consulting uh, company we have worked with over 500 companies and 300 institutions in india and overseas over 6 lakh people have been impacted by our seminars and workshops 
and we have business operations in Bangladesh, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, and uh, Singapore. Uh, and we have uh, some uh, MOUs with some of the finest international organizations and institutes. Now, these are some of our corporate clientele. I'm not going uh, deep. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll get to see that we work with some of the uh, big uh, and the biggest names in uh, India and overseas. And again, uh, some of our institutional clientele, if you go to our website, you'll get to see we have been extremely privileged uh, to work with some of the finest and the best uh, universities, engineering colleges, B schools, polytechnics, etc. And uh, as uh, Professor Mukherjee had mentioned that uh, I am, uh, uh, I have been uh, very lucky to have been mentored by some of the uh, finest and the greatest coaches uh, in the world. I'll come to that a little later. I have also been extremely fortunate to have uh, mentored these in, uh, cricketers uh, for three years. Uh, for all categories of cricketers under 16, under 14, under 19, under 22, and senior Bengal. And some of these uh, in superstar, India superstars, Saurabh Ganguly, Mohammad Shami, Riddhiman, Deep Das Gupta, uh, Abhimanyu Ishwaran, uh, they all happen to be my students. And also, I had a uh, stint with the East Bengal club once when uh, last uh, Trevor Morgan was the coach and uh, uh, Mehta Bhusain, Robin Singh, uh, then uh, Gurpreet Singh, who is the current India goalkeeper, uh, they, uh, they have all been uh, my uh, students. Apart from uh, the uh, corporate the institutions as well as the uh, sports, I have been greatly privileged to work with some of the finest scientific in institutes and work with some of the great scientific minds uh, and had the opportunity to coach some of the best Indian scientists on how to get breakthroughs. And also on, on the social front, I have been greatly privileged to uh, teach meditation and counsel and coach uh, some of the uh, prison inmates as under trials. Uh, uh, the, my mentors, uh, the, uh, the two uh, mentors are internationally extremely eminent. The first mentor is Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, if you uh, go to Google or YouTube, you will get to know that Tony Robbins has his impact in over 100 countries in the world and is considered to be the number one uh, business leadership sales and life coaches life coach uh, and uh, the uh, second uh, gentleman is uh, one mr t harvaker mr t harvaker is uh, uh, known as the most accomplished financial and wealth coach so it has been a, a very very uh, scintillating very exciting journey uh, uh, having been a coach so far and uh, our organization, Dhruv Satya, uh, will uh, uh, step into its 21st year on the 15th of September, uh, that is uh, day after tomorrow. And now, let me share with you uh, my COVID experience. Uh, on the uh, 14th uh, August uh, 2020, I tested positive, as you can see, my uh, the RT-PCR reports. And uh, on the 28th uh, August uh, 2020, I uh, tested negative. And it is uh, during this time uh, that, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, for the first three, four, five days were intensely scary uh, when, uh, you know, as I was ma maintaining the COVID protocol alone in my room. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, just before I had lost uh, a number of my very near and dear ones. And it was very frightful. And uh, the inspiration of this book, Faith, uh, actually occurred at that point of time. And when I personally confronted, personally experienced uh, that how the fear of COVID was even bigger than COVID. And, uh, you know, and then I thought uh, that whatever realizations, I, uh, uh, whatever insights I have received, I must share that with my, uh, uh, with my uh, students, with my uh, learning community and with my readers. And that is how uh, this particular book was born. <clears throat> and just to uh, you know, share with you uh, that uh, uh, I was very lucky uh, that uh, I was almost close to being asymptomatic uh, during my uh, quarantine days. However, as I mentioned that uh, you know, uh, for the first, uh, maybe around uh, three, four, five nights, it was very, very scary. <coughs> And, uh, uh, and I'd like to share that at the end of the journey, 
uh, having gone through that quarantine process, I realized, uh, I had a very deep realization that uh, life itself is a miracle. I realized, uh, you know, that the very fact that, you know, we are all alive today, the very fact that I am alive today, the very fact that I'm healthy today, the very fact that I have an opportunity uh, that's uh, been uh, given uh, by Macau to serve all beautiful people like you, this itself is a great miracle. This itself is an absolutely uh, great blessing from God Almighty. And uh, I realized that, you know, every single day when it unfolds in the morning is actually a gift from God Almighty. And I also realized that, you know, apart from focusing on other aspirations in itself, uh, we must celebrate our being alive this day, this moment, day by day. And this, I have, friends, I share from my very uh, bottom of my heart. And I also realized at that point of time, the power of faith. I just like to share that during the, uh, uh, during my COVID quarantine uh, period, uh, some of the things which I never did. Uh, one is that, for example, I always wanted to remain very positive. I never uh, saw the any uh, and I, I saw any news channel which at that point of time would give uh, you know every single uh, screen, every single uh, uh, you know uh, program would only talk of uh, COVID, 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 COVID. That how many people are getting inf in infected, how many people are dying, how many more people are getting infected, and you know uh, so all that. I completely uh, closed myself. I uh, focused. I uh, I have my uh, iPad and my iPad has been a, a great, great uh, friend of mine. And that was the time when I did a lot of reading. Uh, that was the time when I went to YouTube and lot, saw a lot of inspiring videos. And that gave me that positivity that I'm going to fight. And I also had that, uh, you know, uh, towering belief within me that nothing is going to happen to me. And also one more thing, uh, you know, I have faced many uh, challenges in my life and uh, with uh, every passing challenge actually what happened is uh, that something great uh, had happened after the challenge so i always told myself during those quarantine days that you know god is the greatest god almighty is the biggest trainer and uh, god when god almighty gives us uh, such challenges uh, the only reason God Almighty gives us such challenges is only to make us even more stronger, more powerful, and so that, you know, we come out greater from the challenge. And that is how, that is the time when I realized uh, what the power of faith uh, is. And that is the time I realized uh, that I, uh, and I reinforced and I nourished the faith in myself, faith in my abilities, faith in my fighting prowess, faith in my beliefs that I will triumph faith in my God, in my doctor, in my wife, my colleagues, my other family members. And that is the time I realized the importance of faith. And I decided that I must write a book on this. And uh, this is also uh, what I really liked is when Professor Moitro also had mentioned about that uh, everyone, each one of us, and especially the young learners, you must develop the faith in yourself uh, uh, relentlessly and continuously. So uh, now let's look at uh, that uh, when I say uh, that the fear of COVID is bigger than COVID, let's look at some scary statistics. Now, uh, uh, the, at the time when I made this PPT, uh, COVID has had uh, almost uh, more than 80 different mutants. Just imagine a virus mutating uh, over 80 uh, uh, different. Now, of course, I believe the uh, uh, score has uh, exceeded 80. 46% uh, people globally got affected during the first wave. 54% globally got affected during the second wave. And as we can uh, we hear uh, have, uh, from the news channels, from the experts, uh, that maybe uh, the third wave uh, is impending. We do not know what's going to come. Uh, however, 55 lakh people died globally. Over 18 crore got affected. 3.75 lakh people died in India. Only people are suffering long-term hazards long COVID syndromes, uh, and uh, there had been a the revenue loss to the tune of 32,000 crores. Just friends, for a second, if you, uh, you know, uh, focus on this, if you just mull on this, you will get to 
understand that almost COVID had been instrumental uh, as the third world war. Uh, and uh, now I'd like to share with you that how the fear of COVID and mental health and how COVID had actually, uh, you know, had a very severe negative impact on our mental health. Over 41% adults demonstrated anxiety or depressive disorder. 26% demonstrated suicidal thoughts. 25% demonstrated substance abuse, job loss, income insecurity, distress, low self-esteem. There were other symptoms. 49% women with children demonstrated anxiety disorders. 42% essential workers. Uh, essential workers means people who serve the electricity, uh, you know, our, uh, they work in say West Bengal State Electricity Board, CSC, or, you know, who are working with uh, petrol, uh, supplying uh, petrol, petroleum, or, uh, you know, LPG gas in our homes, all those people. 42% essential workers demonstrated anxiety disorders. 15%, there was a 15% fall in hiring due to second wave, 3% decline in job posting, 5% decline uh, in jobs for entry level roles. Employment seeking youth were critically affected. And uh, from these, uh, some of the key lessons that COVID has taught us. What COVID has taught us, that adversity can come any moment. And hence, uh, you know, in the new normal, uh, we need to be constantly, constantly very alert. Winning over advice, adversity has to be learned, has to be developed as a key uh, capability, as a key competency. We must also learn how to participate in our own rescue. Because today, uh, uh, COVID has come. Tomorrow, uh, you know, we don't know any other, uh, you know, uh, uh, some other virus may come, some other challenge in some other form may come. Hence, uh, you know, uh, how to come out of adversity has to be developed. And we have to develop this muscle. And we also must learn how to participate in our own rescue. Henceforth, uh, we will live in a VUCA world. Professor Moitro had talked about the VUCA world uh, that, uh, you know, uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So uh, continuously, how would you, you need to prepare how to face a book world. So that means you need to uh, uh, develop a constant mental and physical fitness uh, to the tune of that you are war prepared at any moment. Uh, you uh, cannot expect that everything is going to be hunky-dory. You cannot expect that, you know, everything will be certain. You cannot expect uh, that, you know, everything is going to be very simple. And uh, there will be a lot of uh, components in your life, in your career, uh, uh, that both they will be ambiguous and you will be expected uh, to lead and be successful and thrive in spite and despite this uh, VUCA situation. That is going to be the new normal. So here, here, only the fittest will survive. Just, I would like to give you a small example. You know, thriving in the VUCA world is something akin to uh, say the NSG commandos. Uh, the way uh, they rescued the hostages from the Taj during the 26-11. So uh, that is the energy commando, the training uh, they get, that the training teaches them, equips them to thrive in a book world. And so friends and my, uh, you know, uh, uh, the learners who are listening to me, you must uh, from now on uh, condition yourself that I must uh, develop myself so that I can thrive and succeed in a book world. So only the fittest will survive. And hence, uh, to survive in this VUCA world, mental and emotional fitness is paramount. So mental and emotional fitness development has to be a key focus. And um, uh, also, the other thing is that, uh, you know, my immunity development will be in my own hands. And let me share with you that one of the, uh, one of the reasons why immunity gets, uh, uh, gets uh, weakened is through stress. And... How it happens, this has also uh, uh, come out in the WHO website where WHO health experts had mentioned that when we get stressed at that point of time, our neurochemistry changes. And what happens is that, uh, you know, uh, the hormone cortisol starts uh, secreting more and more. And uh, when the hormone cortisol starts secreting more and more, which is also known as the uh, stress hormone, what actually starts happening is that we start feeling panicky, we start feeling hopeless, uh, we uh, start feeling negative, uh, and uh, we start demonstrating 
uh, you know, these kind of negative behaviors. And uh, when we start developing those kind of uh, behaviors, uh, the WHO report has clearly stated that that very strongly negatively affects our immune system and hence the chances of our getting, uh, you know, infected by COVID becomes that much more higher. So uh, only if we really want to, uh, in, you know, uh, stay immune, uh, stay away from COVID, then only uh, wearing the mask or sanitizing is not enough. We also need to know how to uh, enhance our mental fitness. We also need to learn how to uh, develop a bulletproof attitude and remain positive every day, every hour of the day. So how to uh, develop faith? So during the times of deep adversity, cynicism and despair tends to set in. And it is in these periods when we read the stories of some of the great survivors, some great lives, who have overcome insurmountable hopeless odds in our lives and still try and we feel inspired. So uh, friends, uh, have, uh, we will like to learn uh, uh, from these, some of these great lives. And the, uh, this book, uh, Faith, uh, ha has two parts. Uh, the first part we are going to, I'm going to uh, briefly cover the first part. The first part uh, is the strategies part. The name of the book is Faith, Stories and Strategies. Uh, to uh, conquer COVID. I'm sorry. The first part is the stories part where we are going to uh, look at 10 uh, great lives who have overcome uh, some insurmountable odds. So the first uh, a, a character is Captain General Coffey. Now, Captain General Coffey uh, was a Navy pilot and on uh, February 3, 1966, uh, during the Vietnam War, uh, you know, Jerry, uh, General Coffey's nickname was Jerry. Jerry was flying a combat mission in a Kitty Hawk aircraft uh, when he was shot down and captured by the North Vietnamese uh, you know, people. He, his uh, aircraft was uh, you know, bombarded by the anti-aircraft guns. And after he was captured, he was taken to the uh, prison and in, uh, he had to live in solitary confinement in tiny, uh, uh, fill the cells in absolutely excruciating torture. Uh, and this torture violated all our earlier international agreements. And, uh, you know, imagine uh, over seven years and uh, the uh, every hour of the day was a big challenge. Every day was important. And he kind of developed a purpose such that he can uh, remain inspired and survive. And every night of those seven long years, uh, this gentleman, uh, you know, he would keep himself uh, motivated. And there were other prison inmates who were captured and were kept in the same prison also in solitary confinement, and he would communicate, General Coffee, Jerry would communicate with the other prisoners by tapping, uh, and they found uh, some kind of a rhythm, and that rhythm depicted where by tapping, they would kind of sing, God bless America, which is one very famous American patriotic song. So this was the mechanism, how General Coffee survived uh, this 2,564 days. And so this is, uh, you know, uh, some pictures of Captain General Coffee in uniform and this beyond survival. Uh, it is his autobiography, very talks about the power of faith. And you must, uh, you know, get a copy of this and read this. And on the, uh, the uh, next picture, you see our scribblings on the wall of his prison cells. So, you know, in my book, uh, after every chapter, after the story, uh, you know, I kind of uh, want to try to catch uh, the life lessons. What were the life lessons? So, you know, uh, in, very interesting that initially, uh, you know, uh, Jerry uh, would ask himself that, why did it happen to me? And he realized that because it's something like this, you know, when some challenge, uh, some accident, some crisis happens to us, uh, we kind of, uh, you know, tell ourselves, Bhagwan, main tera kya bigara? Ye mere saath kyu hua? and all that. And subsequently, he found that by asking this question, he was actually getting more and more uh, in a state of despair. And he understood that, you know, he has to change. And uh, subsequently, he got that insight and uh, he changed his way of questioning and started questioning in a different way, uh, where he started questioning that how can I use this time uh, productively? Uh, so, you know, he understood uh, that there are certain things which he cannot control. What was he? What was he not being able to control that the very fact that he was imprisoned? Now he knew that he was not controlling the uh, you know prison policies. He was not controlling when he will be uh, you know released and all that. Uh, hence he realized that you know it's not uh, very intelligent uh, to focus on those issues. 
On the contrary, he understood that, uh, let me focus on something which I control. And when uh, what he could control is how he responded to the challenge and how he, what he could control is what he thought, what was his thinking during the challenge? How was he thinking while he was confronting the challenge? And this thinking, as we all know, that is nothing but a sequence of questions. And with this insight, he started changing the uh, uh, you know, daily question that he normally used to ask. So, you know, we do need to change the pattern of the question that we ask ourselves on a daily basis. And so some examples uh, uh, that, uh, you know, of questions that we can ask ourselves is how can I prevent being affected by COVID? What new actions can I take to thrive in these difficult times? How can I stay mentally and physically strong? What new strategies can I look at? So uh, friends, practice faith. And one more thing, when you are practicing something, one thing, never, never, never doubt out. And at any time, back yourself. So the, the, so the conversation that you have to have in your mind is that I am going to thrive. I am going to succeed. I will make it. I am going to triumph. And one more thing. Remember, uh, resilience, persistence. Never, 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 ever give up. The next story is one of my uh, favorites. Now, I'll take you back to the uh, Nazi times. And, uh, you know, there was this gentleman, uh, Lech. And uh, he uh, is to live in uh, Munich. And one night he was having a family dinner with his uh, wife, with his father, mother, and uh, with his two children. And suddenly there were a few knocks in the door and uh, Lech, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lech's wife, I'm sorry, Lech's wife, uh, Mrs. Stanislavski uh, goes to open the door. And as soon as she opens the door, she is greeted with a volley of bullets from the Nazi uh, secret service agents. And instantly, out of that insane firing, uh, the casualties were instantly, uh, uh, Mrs. Stanislavski died, Nazi uh, Lech's parents died, and their children died, and they were spot dead. And uh, they, uh, the Nazi secret service agents, they captured uh, you know, Lech, and uh, they uh, kind of you know, hold them, hold him, in a train and take him to Krakow, uh, which was a concentration camp. And subsequently, just uh, you know, uh, just to show you, show you. Uh, so this is how a concentration camp looked, and uh, this is how the uh, prisoners. Uh, these are real pictures. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in the concentration camp uh, would be that every day uh, they would kind of wait death. There would not be a roster. In the morning, the jailer would come and you know just arbitrarily name a few names and ask them to queue and you know queuing, queuing for what queuing for uh being taken to the gas chamber which you see as the third picture over here and in the gas chamber there would be poisonous gas uh, that would be injected in them and they would die and become corpses so here uh you know as you see uh as so many people were killed that you can see a dump of you know eyeglasses of killed victims even the ladies were not spared and uh, so this was the kind of environment that prevailed in a, in, in a concentration camp. And everyone was in a state of absolute terror. Now, even in such a situation, Lech would not give up. And Lech would continuously ask himself that, how can I, how can I uh, you know, escape uh, this particular prison? And Lech would go and ask uh, his co-prison inmates that, can you please tell me, how can I uh, escape? Can you please tell me? Every one of them would say, you don't even, uh, don't even imagine, don't even think. No one has ever, uh, you know, escaped a concentration camp. On the contrary, you please pray to God Almighty so that you have a, you know, more peaceful death. But Lech would not give up. And he would still look for alternatives and constantly ask. Uh, and as they say that the more intensely you ask, uh, you know, God is kind to him. Uh, one evening, what happened is uh, that a truck uh, comes and enters the prison uh, uh, gate. And Lech was just, uh, you know, looking at the truck. And the truck, uh, the objective of the truck was to carry, ferry uh, the dead bodies to a uh, burial, mass burial ground, which was about 27 kilometers away from the prison. And the, uh, the dead bodies were actually being dumped on the truck. And looking at that specter, uh, Lech suddenly feels uh, that, you know, uh, how can this uh, situation help me uh, uh, in escaping? 
and instantly he gets an idea and the idea is that can i if i get if i strip myself naked and if i kind of pose and act as if i'm a corpse maybe uh, the uh, guards and the uh, drivers they will mistake me as a corpse and actually bury me and that will give me an opportunity to escape and as he think instantly he acts like that and he strips himself naked dives at the uh, you know that uh, uh, the truck and you know uh, holds his breath and lies like this and uh, as if uh, he's a dead body and what happens is the actually what he thinks that takes place the guards they mistake him as a dead body and they also take him uh, to 27 uh, kilometers away to that mass burial ground and bury him along with other uh, corpses and imagine at that place uh, the temperature at that point of time was something around minus 41 degrees centigrade so chilling cold it was and uh, this gentleman waits for his turn about 7 8 hours uh, amidst the uh, you know uh, the corpses then swims up the burial and then uh, again he runs for about 15 20 kilometers and was lucky to meet the ally camp camp of allies and the camp of allies when they actually meet lech they get inspired because lech stanislavski becomes the first example uh, who has escaped from the uh, from a nazi concentration camp which was considered earlier to be invincible and hence lech's escape you know um, mobi- uh, motivates inspires uh the entire allies allies camp and the rest is history as you all know uh, that uh, you know following that uh, the uh, uh, the germans under general rommel were literally plummeted so this is the story of lech stanislavski now what are the life lessons from lech uh, always practice hope always practice finding out positives from the darkest adversity practice living in the present every moment remember the past is history and the future is mystery the only 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 truth is the present moment do not do not do not live in your past and one more thing is expect miracles you know the rest is you see uh, you know i tell myself every day i tell my colleagues i tell everyone that the 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 results actually lie in the hands of god almighty or whatever power super power that you believe in but the action taking is in our hands so our job is to take massive 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 action we must not give any leave any stone unturned and the rest is you know we need to expect miracles and and when you expect miracles miracles to happen and uh, the next is practice gratitude so i'm going to come uh, when i come to the strategy part i'm going to elaborate on this practice gratitude part the next story uh, which inspires me enormously is the story of nelson mandela imagine a man serving 27 years of prison sentence in solitary confinement under absolutely in- inhabitable conditions braving ailments like tuberculosis yet surviving powerfully imagine that this 27 years comprised his comprised his golden years from 48 to 75 and that was his age uh, you know uh, when he was released and after uh, you know he was released within the uh, within 5 years uh, he uh, later uh, he, beca- he becomes the premier of the same country that robbed his 27 golden years and add to that uh, you know that uh, uh, you know when he uh, when uh, he takes oath uh, for his presidency he invites uh, two people and uh, he invites them in a manner that they were you know uh, in the uh, sitting in the first row the same two people who 30 years back actually had uh, you know conspired against him and kept him uh, to solitary uh, you know in uh, imprisonment for 27 years now this gentleman had the gumption to forgive those two, uh, those two people and the uh, the the press uh, the global press was there and looking at this uh you know they were absolutely absolutely uh you know completely stumped and they asked uh, nelson mandela that how is it how could you forgive these two people uh, who actually did you so much of damage who actually took away 30 years of you from your life and at that point uh, nelson mandela answered that i am also the president i am the president of the country which also includes that i am the president of these two gentlemen 
And the next thing that he said that if I had and harbored the, the poison of revenge, mark my words, the poison of revenge within me, then I'm not fit. I would not have been fit to become a president. Now the whole point is just, just imagine how much of resilience this man must be having. 27 years of solitary confinement. When? At the golden time of his life. Imagine the kind of sacrifice. Imagine the kind of, you know, resilience. Imagine the kind of, you know, the art or the science of survival day to day. And also imagine that all these 27 years of torture could not subdue his aspiration, his dream, that one day he will make South Africa free of apartheid and he would also be, lead the country and become its first black president. Now, you know, I mean, the, the, any, every time I, I think about this man, I get goosebumps. And, and, and you know, let me share uh, some of his, uh, you know, quotes that I learned that courage was not the absence of fear. So friends, the point is the brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but who acts why, and con conquers that fear. So the point is that every one of us has fear, but the brave man is who in spite and despite that fear still acts. And uh, you know, so the, uh, the third court, do not judge me by my success, successes, judge me by how many times I have, I, I have bounced back. Now, so, you know, uh, in life, so many times uh, we fall down. Now, falling down is not a disgrace. Now, uh, the point is that everyone falls down. Every falling down is a learning experience. Now, the whole point that we need to master is how quick, how quick, how fast, how swiftly can we bounce back? So that is the key. And so uh, uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, 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 this is the power of resilience. Sentenced to life imprisonment for conspiring to overthrow. So 27 years is uh, in prison. So this is one of uh, you know uh, his uh, uh, pictures, and he became president of South Africa uh, when he was 75 years of age, and subsequently went on to win uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. So uh, there would be many uh, young uh, learners uh, in this webinar. I invite you, I challenge you, that take this inspiration, make him a role model, and emulate him. Be a character. Be resilient. Be aspirational and fulfill your dreams, just as Nelson Mandela did. And uh, some of the life lessons uh, that instead of revenge, he chose to forgive. So one thing, uh, friends, that we need to practice is, uh, you know, no matter what the situation, let's stop complaining and let's stop blaming. On the contrary, what we must do is to take responsibility. Let's take responsibility and let's start acting. And the other is practice resilience. What is resilience? Resilience is that I am not going to be put down no matter how many challenges come in. I am not going to give up. I am going to persevere. <clears throat> they, uh, you know, this reminds me of that famous Hindi song. Dekhte hai kis mein kitna hai dam. A very old, uh, when I used to study in the, my high school, uh, this uh, film got re uh, released. And this song has been a very, very uh, uh, favorite Hindi song of mine. Uh, and now I, I let me share with you another character. Uh, you know this lady called Arunima Sinha. Now imagine she Arunima was a young girl, and uh, she used to play volleyball, and she aspired that one day she will represent India in volleyball. Now uh, she uh, came from humble uh, backgrounds. Her father uh, used to you know, work in the railways and uh, the family needed her to actually uh, you know, work uh, uh, in the uh, uh, you know, uh, join railways and earn for the family. And one day uh, from a place in Lucknow, near Lucknow, she boarded a train and she was traveling to Delhi in a uh, general compartment and she was wearing a golden necklace and she finds uh, two miscreants or a group of miscreants coming and wanting to snatch the uh, necklace from her neck. And as a result, a uh, scuffle developed 
and uh, in the during the scuffle those miscreants pushes anonima from the running train and you know what from the other side another running train was coming in and arunima fell on the railway tracks and over her right leg the running train passes for 17 hours arunima lies on the uh, railway tracks in excruciating pain profusely bleeding and then passes off she was unconscious uh, on the next morning the gangmen who actually repaired these railway tracks a group of them finds arunima like this and takes her in that state to the berily state uh, hospital and uh, uh, there the doctor who was there at the emergency uh, sees arunima and tells her uh, i mean and and uh, uh, prescribes that she her uh, damaged leg has to be amputated right away uh, and only uh, this can save her life and one more thing that at that point of time berily state hospital did not have any stock of general anesthesia and uh, hence uh uh you know the surgery the surgical procedure had to be performed under local anesthesia just imagine and subsequently uh the amputation was carried out and i would want my viewers to imagine that at that point of time uh the uh, state of the uh, the uh, the uh, berily hospital was something like this which arunima writes in her biography ever is ki beti that i am lying there in my bed after my amputation bandaged and i can see my amputated leg is you know uh, lying a little away from my bed and i also see a couple of street dogs coming into my ward and feasting on that amputated leg now imagine how would that person feel now this was the kind of environment yet in spite of this environment at that point of time Arunima told herself that this has happened to me because God wants me to become a world champion, and uh, with that thought, uh, she decides and make commits to a goal that I am going to scale Mount Everest in the next two years. And looking and listening to her, all the paramedical people uh, who were surrounding the bed of Arunima, they got they felt that Arunima probably had lost her, uh, you know, mental balance. and they get a psychiatrist but the rest is history cutting a long story short orinima starts focusing on uh, you know her new dream that she is going to uh, you know scale mount everest in two years as a result you know her, her uh, recovery becomes miraculously fast and uh, you know she uh, gets his her release from the hospital and goes on to jamshedpur to train under bachendri pal who was the first Uh, indian uh, woman summit here and trains under his ac- under her academy then manages a uh, big sponsorship from tata steel and subsequently uh, you know she manages not only to uh, triumph and scale mount everest becoming the first uh, amputee in the world to scale mount everest but she also scales you know uh, six other uh, uh, similar kind of some uh, peaks internationally the last peak uh, was in 2019 and subsequently she writes a book called everest ki beti which is available uh, in amazon and uh, uh, she was conferred upon the padma award padma shri award uh, by uh, our uh, you know late president pranab mukherjee and she is now a motivational uh, speaker uh, like me and uh, so you know the the great lesson uh, from uh, arunima was that she converted her biggest tragedy to her uh, greatest big to so you know a, a great a great meaning a great life lesson from arunima is that outstanding achievers don't ever think that they do not face challenges the bigger the dream the bigger the challenge and the bigger the fall but they come out of these challenges make that a habit and they come out from them by always 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 extracting a powerful inspirational inspiring meaning from all that crisis adversity accident and the challenge so some life lessons of arunima sina from arunima's life when arunima learned that one leg needs to be amputated she extracted a powerful positive interpretation from adversity with this interpretation her entire focus shifted to her goal 
of conquering Mount Everest. So currently, many of you who are listening to this webinar, you may be feeling down uh, or depressed or helpless or frustrated or fearful for some challenge or the other. I invite you to remind yourself on Oruni Vasina and tell yourself that God is actually testing your resolves, challenging your comfort zone only to prepare you for bigger, greater achievements for the future. Remember that. So uh, a conditioning that you need to make for yourself is that every challenge makes me greater. Now, when you operate with this, you know, microchip in your mind, you will be absolutely unstoppable. So whenever any negative thoughts try to pull you down, immediately change your focus, you will start feeling positive. The next story is a man who is my hero, John Nash. Now, uh, if you have not seen so far, you must watch a film, an Academy Award winning film, The Beautiful Mind. John Forbes Nash was an American mathematician who is the only person in the world to have been awarded both the Nobel Prize as well as the Abel Prize. The Abel Prize is actually the Nobel Prize in mathematics. But that is not the issue here. The issue is that from 1959, uh, uh, when he was only 31 years of age, he means uh, John Nash began showing clear signs of mental illness. Yet, in spite of his mental illness, he won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1994 and the Abel Prize in 2015. Now, just I'd like to give you a perspective. Now, this gentleman uh, uh, is to uh, graduated from Princeton University and also did his research in Princeton. Now, I, I want you to imagine a situation and he got his uh, Nobel Prize uh, because of uh, you know, his discoveries, uh, his in, uh, you know, game changing inventions in game theory. Now, uh, uh, if you do not know uh, what is schizophrenia, I'd like to give you a flavor. Now, uh, schizophrenia is almost similar to insanity, similar to being mad. Now, uh, you know, when one, is, one suffers from schizophrenia, what happens is he gets illusions. And also he hears imaginary, imaginary unreal sounds. And many a time, uh, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, uh, starts believing a completely different reality, which is imaginary. And he starts, uh, you know, uh, demonstrating uh, very unpredictable behavior, sometimes getting intensely violent. And if you, if you see the film uh, Beautiful Mind, you'll see that when he was in the afternoon of his career, uh, his uh, schizophrenia became so intense that he was chained almost uh, like a way, like the way you know, these uh, uh, mental asylums, they uh, chain uh, the mentally sick individual and bring them to the asylum. He was almost transported in the same, uh, uh, you know, way. Now, I want you to imagine that when this is the state of his mind, how the hell can this person, you know, uh, in the same mind, in the same ecosystem, uh, can he come up with game-changing, outstanding, surprisingly, miraculous, uh, you know, mathematical solutions. And interestingly, uh, in the, uh, if you see the film, you will get to see that one day, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, uh, John Nash, after his class, uh, when he comes out, he was, uh, you know, greeted with a, a person. Uh, and that gentleman uh, was from uh, the Nobel Committee and he comes and asks John, uh, that, you know, I would like to uh, let you know that this, you have been nominated for this year's Nobel Prize. And then uh, they go around a walk in the campus of the Princeton University. Uh, Princeton University has a beautiful campus. And uh, while they were having the walk, uh, the uh, gentleman from the Nobel Committee tells him that, you know, uh, I want to ask you, John, that, you know, uh, I was wondering that on one side, you hear, uh, you know, imaginary sounds, you uh, see hallucinations every time. On the other side, how the heck can you, uh, you know, how could you get those game-changing mathematical solutions? And, you know, the answer that John gave, John said that, you know, I understood that these guys, these guys means the hallucinations and the imaginary noises, that these guys are not going to leave me. 
So I kind of made a samjhota with them. And I told them that you live, don't disturb me, but let me do my stuff. And that's how we peacefully cohabited. Now, this may sound, uh, you know, humorous, but this is, I mean, absolutely incredible, awesome, extraordinary psychology. I mean, uh, the more I thought, that how is it possible for a man uh, to, you know, uh, uh, have and live with such an extraordinary psychology? And imagine this man with such an extraordinary psychology goes on uh, to win the Nobel Prize. Uh, absolutely beautiful, beautiful film. Uh, must watch, must see. Now, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, film poster. And uh, this is a picture of John Nash. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, must. So, you know, again, uh, John Nash is another superstar, another hero. Uh, who inspires me every day, every moment. Uh, the next story is one of Wilma Rudolph. Uh, now, she was the 20th among her 22 siblings. Uh, she was born to a poor American family. She had an acute bout of polio in her childhood, and so acute was her polio that she was completely paralyzed uh, and uh, bedridden from the childhood. So acute was her condition that every doctor who saw her diagnosed that she may not be even able to stand on her feet, leave aside walking. But, you know, she dreamt that one day she wanted to become the fastest woman on earth and stand on the Olympic portal, Olympic podium with the gold medal uh, and the world record uh, hanging down, the, uh, down her neck. And, uh, you know, in spite of all this, uh, you know, this uh, girl, uh, she started going to school from her page of seven with braces. And then subsequently, from the age of 10, she could, uh, you know, walk uh, without braces. And she starts playing basketball. I'm cutting a long story short. Uh, there was a coach and uh, he, her coach uh, watching her could understand that she, her actual talent was in running. And she tells her that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that you must practice sprinting. And then uh, Wilma takes on to sprinting. And uh, then in, in the year 1956, uh, Wilma uh, get, wins a bronze medal in one of the Olympics. She gets depressed and her coach comes and inspires her that the next four years you give everything in your practice. The gold medal will be yours. And then in the 1960, uh, in the Tokyo Olympics, you know, uh, while she was there at the starting point at the, uh, you know, the 100 meters dash, at that point, a uh, 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 thought flashes Wilma's mind. What was the thought? Wilma felt that, you know, she has to win this race and not for her personal glory, but for the fact to prove to the whole world that polio can be conquered. And just to give you a, a, a similarity, that polio was also at that point of time similar to COVID. And, you know, uh, there was a limiting belief at that point of time, the polio vaccine was not invented. And doctors, patients, the world over believe that once anyone had uh, polio means life-threatening and crippled for life. And uh, here was uh, this uh, a girl determined to break that limiting belief. And subsequently, she manages to win that in uh, absolutely world record time. And uh, just by winning that 100 meters, she doesn't stop there. The next day, she wins the 200 meters. And uh, the next to next day, she pivots the American women's, uh, you know, relay team to uh, their four into 100 meters uh, gold. And, uh, you know, uh, subsequently the next year, from uh, uh, Wilma's feet, the entire world believes by looking at Wilma that polio can be conquered. And then subsequently the vaccine was invented and many other people got inspiration from uh, you know, Wilma's feet. So Wilma Rudolph's feet does not merely remain a sporting achievement. It goes far, far beyond that. And one of his famous quotes uh, that uh, when she mentioned in her book that my doctor told me that I would never walk again. My mother told me that I would and I believe my mother. So, you know, all ultimately is a result of my belief. And faith, again, uh, you know, by practicing faith, you, you, you develop your belief. And when you develop the right beliefs, when you develop powerful beliefs, you become absolutely, absolutely unstoppable. 
so these are some of the uh, you know uh, uh, pictures and uh, you'll get the uh, Wilma Rudolph's uh, uh, the film on a life in YouTube you would also uh, get the uh, book uh, you can buy it it's available in Amazon or you could also get it probably in Google uh, the uh, the next story uh, is uh, you know about uh, another man called Maurice Goodman. Now Maurice was a top-notch insurance agent. On March 10, 1981, uh, Maurice uh, you know he was an MDRT MDRT insurance agent means at the uh, at the very top of uh, you know uh, being a top insurance sales person. And because he was very rich, uh, he uh, actually uh, you know had his own aircraft. And one day, while he was flying his own aircraft, suddenly plane's engines lost power and crashed. Goodman was very badly injured. And uh, just to give you a description, how bad was that injury? His cervical vertebrae was broken. He was completely paralyzed. Uh, he was unable to breathe, talk, or swallow on his own. The only, only movement he could make was with his eyes. And he could only communicate through batting his eye eyelids. And, you know, some... He through batting his eyelids with his sister and the nursing staff who uh, you know served him, uh, they kind of made a sign language, uh, and uh, by batting his eyelids and blinking, and he repeatedly visualized in his mind that he was walking out smoothly in the hospital before Christmas, which was about nine months later. And Goodman started to recover very fast. First, his uh, artificial respiratory apparatus could be removed as he started breathing naturally. Next. The fracture started healing very fast. He could start his orthopedic rehabilitation very fast. And through physical and occupational therapy, his leg muscle strength came back, stamina improved. And ultimately, uh, you know, he could, uh, you know, fulfill his dream uh, to get out uh, before Christmas. Now, uh, if you, uh, in my book, uh, the entire story is given. Uh, now, uh, here, uh, what is given is that you are not dead till your last breath. Maurice Goodman proves that you are not dead till your last breath. And uh, so this is uh, some of the pictures, uh, the autobiography, uh, The Miracle Man. Maurice Goodman has a website. You must, you may go uh, and watch. This is how Maurice looked uh, in the hospital bed. And, uh, you know, uh, look at the, uh, the, uh, the uh, destroyed parts, how badly his aircraft got damaged. And the final story is of Keroli Takax. Now, Keroli Takax was a Hungarian pistol shooter who was born in Budapest and joined the Hungarian army. By 1936, he was a world-class pistol shooter. As he was preparing to participate in the 1936 Olympic Games, one day, during the course of his military drills, a faulty grenade exploded in his shooting hand. Mind it. It exploded in his shooting hand, destroying the shooting hand completely. And uh, it, you know, it was a, it was absolutely devastating. However, Caroli Takax did not give up. And what he did, he focused on training his other hand and uh, started training his other hand and uh, making it as good. So while one hand was destroyed, uh, he, with tremendous determination resolved, he switched to his right hand and started practicing with it. In 1948 London Olympics, he defeated uh, the reigning Argentine world champion, Carlos Enrique, and uh, subsequently he uh, won a gold medal. And four years down the line, again, he won another gold medal. Just imagine, just imagine a gentleman uh, who shoots with his left hand uh, and is an aspiring, uh, you know, uh, gold medalist, his uh, left hand gets completely destroyed. His right hand was weak like any other, I mean, because that was the uh, uh, non-active hand. And this gentleman doesn't get stopped there. He trains the non-shooting hand and makes it as powerful. And with the non-shooting hand, he gets, he wins two uh, gold medals and ultimately, uh, you know, uh, achieves his dream. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. So, you know, two of his great uh, quotes, chase your dreams, no matter what life gives you. It's not about being the best. It's about being, being better than yesterday. So 
uh, uh, you know, something very inspiring to take from his life, being better than yesterday. So every morning that when you wake up, you must tell yourself that I must be better than yesterday. Uh, and so this is, uh, you know, uh, two pictures of uh, Carolita Tax. So as I mentioned, uh, the first part uh, was the stories part. And now we are going to go in deep with the strategies part. I hope all of you enjoyed uh, the uh, first part. Uh, now uh, let's analyze that some of the strategies uh, which uh, these heroes, uh, they uh, also practiced and some of the strategies uh, which you must practice to enhance and develop and uh, 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 your mental fitness and uh, develop a bulletproof attitude. So the first is the power of meditation. So, uh, you know, quickly, uh, I have been practicing meditation for the last 20 years. And, uh, you know, I practice Vipassana meditation. Now what meditation does, uh, uh, quickly, let me share with you that, uh, you know, especially when you are students, a very key aspect is concentration. Now, uh, since, uh, you know, meditation came into my life, a lot later, I realized that if while I was in school, while I, while I was in college, you know, if I knew meditation, my academic results would have been far, 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 far better. Because like many of uh, you, you know, I suffered from a vacillating mind. So the first thing on developing your mind is developing your concentration. And the best way to develop concentration is learning to meditate. So. You know, if you do not take anything from this webinar, at least, you know, uh, learn meditation from wherever, you know, at the end of this uh, uh, webinar, I, I, we also teach, I also teach meditation. I'm going to share with you, uh, you know, how you can learn. Uh, if you buy this book, uh, the book has uh, described uh, that, you know, uh, how you can practice meditation. But the whole point is that when you do that, what is going to happen? One is that your distractions will go away you will be able to focus better. And since you will be able to focus better, what is going to happen is that your absorption, you know, when you are in a class, you will absorb better. You will be able to understand better. You will be able to retain the learnings better. And also uh, when in the examination hall or during the Viva Voces, you will be able to recall them better. So, you know, this is absolutely amazing. Second thing is, yeah, you know, all these distraction, friends, other entertainments and all that, you know, uh, you will be able to, uh, you know, have a, a, a you will, uh, an insulation from all that. Hence, you will be able to focus for long periods of time. There will be intensity. You will be able to develop a positive attitude. Your stress, your anger, your other uh, negative emotions, they will uh, go away. You will have good sleep. You will develop an innate calmness. You will uh, feel stress-free. So, Immensely, immensely, immensely beneficial. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it will develop your creativity, get new ideas, your memory will improve, uh, and so on and so forth. So, fantastic. So, the first thing uh, uh, which I uh, teach just to quickly in uh, 10 seconds to share with you uh, the meditation that you can practice quick. You know, you can sit in a chair or you can sit uh, on the ground, close your eyes, and take your mind uh, to this uh, triangle just below. Uh, the nostrils and for about 15 20 minutes all you need to do is uh, park your mind here make it like a gatekeeper and watch every single uh, breath objectively and when you start practicing it you know you will see gradually that you are settling down in a state of calm and uh, this is going to this when i from the day my, i learned meditation you know this has been absolutely life changing game changing to me just 30 minutes of practice a day will create magic in your life. So these are some of the, you know, also if some of you are interested in practicing meditation, uh, you know, I did my uh, Vipassana courses from Shodhpur, uh, uh, Vipassana Kendra. If you want in, in my book, all the details are given. It's a free of cost course. Uh, but, you know, no matter wherever you learn from, please learn and practice meditation. Uh, the next is, you know, many a time I talked of uh, building an extraordinary psychology and I have talked about a, a method uh, which is known as WCT. In one of my future books, which is going to come up, the name of the book is Achieving World Class. 
And in this uh, book, uh, the book talks about how an ordinary person can also become world class. There, you know, uh, there is a chapter which is known as world class thinking. And I developed this concept from uh, the management quality concepts like TQM, TPM. They are all quality uh, principles. And, uh, you know, uh, there, the idea is that if you actually practice this thinking method, you are your thinking skills, your intelligence, they are bound to bound to improve your quality of thinking. And hence, when your quality of thinking improves, naturally, your quality of results in any area and every area of life is going to improve. So, you know, uh, what does it call for practice zero anger from today? No anger. Practice zero complaints. You're not going to complain from today. Practice zero blaming, no blaming and zero excuses from today. So uh, what I suggest is that each one of you, you kind of keep a spiral, a spiral in your uh, pocket. Uh, I have a little pocket pad in your pocket and uh, every night before you go to sleep, note down how many times did I get angry today? How many times did I complain today? How many times did I blame today? How many times did I give excuses today? On the contrary, and your uh, you know aspiration will be to uh, lower those numbers. And you will see a transformation in your thinking process, in your mindset. The next thing that you need to do, do not allow any negative thought to enter in your mind. Not any negative thought. This is the place. This is like your, you know, uh, ICCU, you know, uh, critical care unit. You, it's like the uh, finest rose garden. You cannot allow any pollution over here. So, uh, you know, and also do not speak anything negative. Do not keep any negative company. Mind it. Do not speak. So any negative, uh, you know, talks, any negative company. Remember, a negative company is like a virus. Always be in a company of people who tells you that you can do it. This is possible. You are capable. You are uh, a jewel. You are, uh, you know, uh, people always be in a company of people who inspire you. The next is you need to be crystal clear with respect to your desired outcomes. That means uh, you, each one of you must set your goals. What do I want to achieve in my uh, life? What career uh, would I want to achieve in? Which company? Do I want to become uh, a businessman? Uh, do I want to get into and become a great academician? Whatever, whatever it calls you, be very specific and set your goals. And goals in every area, health goals, uh, what are some of the material uh, things that you want like to achieve? So, how, you know, if you want to buy a car, which car? If you want to buy a house, uh, you know, how big, where? If you want to buy a bungalow, you know, how big a bungalow? Where do you want that bungalow? And if you want to, uh, you know, travel the world, which are the countries? And so also all, all that. So, you know, you need to be very specific and objective. So goal setting is an absolute, absolute must. Let me share with you. I, I, all, uh, I regularly, regularly set goals. And when I achieve one goal, you know, again, at that point of time, I, I set another goal. And, uh, you know, setting your goal is the only way that you progress. Always practice focusing on what you want, your desired outcome. Immediately eliminate any thought, uh, you know. So, again, as I mentioned uh, a little early, I'm not going to elaborate on this. So, for example, you know, in the, uh, in the, uh, when we watch the TVs, televisions, or when we look at the newspapers, we always get to see so many people are dying, so many people are losing jobs. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, so many new mutants are coming in and all that. Now, let me tell you that, you know, all this negative data that we get from the news channels or the newspapers, are we controlling any of this? Absolutely not. And so, in uh, you know, what should we really control? What are we controlling? What we control is that, you know, wearing the uh, mask all the time, using the sanitizers all the time, keeping our social distancing, remaining positive, uh, you know, remain uh, doing exercise uh, so that, you know, be, uh, remain physical fit uh, and, uh, you know, having a healthy diet and all that. So the point is that do not, do not, do not focus on things that you do not control. <coughs> Always focus on things which you can control. The next thing is very, very important. The quality of our life is the quality of our emotions. Very, very, very important lesson, friends. So practice living every single day, 
60% of every single day in positive emotional states. That means what? Positive emotional states is excitement, creativity, determination, contribution, uh, innovation. Uh, you know, when you are uh, making a difference, sacrifice, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, discovery, playfulness, uh, being in love, being in gratitude, uh, being in compassion. So all be celebrating. These are all, you know, uh, positive emotional states. And uh, you must be conscious that I do not remain in negative emotional states. Now, what are negative emotional states? Negative emotional states are, uh, say, being in, ang being in anger, being in jealousy, uh, being revengeful, uh, you know, in a state of sadness, depression, anxiety, panic. So be aware, be conscious that 60% of your day, you must uh, stay in positive emotional states. Always practice uh, solution thinking. Identify all your problems as your mental barbells and dumbbells and uh, that have uh, been sent to enhance uh, your muscle in problem solving. So, uh, you know, any problem comes in, any problem comes in, immediately tell yourself, as I mentioned a little while back, that prob leaders actually have problems for breakfast. God gives us problems to grow us, to develop us. If we never had problems, we would never grow. So whenever a problem comes in, first is embrace it. By, uh, you know, just to share with you, uh, the more the, uh, you develop your problem solving skills, the bigger a problem solver you become in your life, you will be absolutely, absolutely, you know, unstoppable. You will be so much sought after. You want a good job, every job will, every job owner, every company will queue up, uh, you know, outside your gate that I want them. I want him. I want only him because he can solve any problem. But to, you know, develop. So, so you know, all this commitment, passion, problem solving, positive thinking, everything is a skill. And how do you develop a skill? You develop a skill by repeating it, repeating it again and again, again and again, again and again. How do you repeat it? By practicing it. Why do you practice it in your daily life? So you need to take your daily life as your gym, as your gymnasium. And all these are new exercises. The more you practice, what happens? Uh, you know, uh, the practice and repetition develop reinforcement and practice repetition and reinforcement ultimately blossoms as a skill. So you will be very skilled in problem solving. And, uh, you know, uh, extract. The next is extract a positive inspirational meaning. As I mentioned, like in the story of uh, uh, Arunima Sina and others also. And interpret for every problem. See every crisis as a blessing. Uh, you know, uh, have that belief that every crisis, uh, you know, something outstanding from every class crisis, something outstanding is going to happen. So you know, when you have a cry, uh, when you uh, when you are, are hit with a crisis or an accident or any uh, serious challenge, immediately tell yourself that God has sent me uh, to make me greater. God has sent me to. Uh, you know, make me even stronger. God has sent me to make it, make me unstoppable. And instantly you will see that negativity from that crisis is going to go away and you are going to feel tremendously confident, tremendously charged, absolutely awesome and unstoppable. Un, uh, and the other thing is that whenever you make a mistake, always say sorry. So always forgive and ask for forgiveness. You know, uh, let me share with you the Many persons I see, uh, they operate with ego. Now, let me tell you, ego is the greatest stumbling block. Ego is the greatest destroyer. You know, there is no uh, inferior, no one is inferior or superior. The same color of blood that flows in your uh, you know, veins also flows in everyone else's. Also, the same amount of God that resides in you is also within me. And at the end of the day, when we have to either go to the grave or to the crematorium, you know, uh, when the uh, when each uh, dead body lies there in the coffin, now who is superior, who is inferior, there is nothing. So there is no nothing. So you know, the whole point is, and COVID has taught us we, that that we never know that who is there. This moment will may not be the, in the next moment. So every moment that we uh, you know spend with a person, we must spend in compassion, in love, in respect. So uh, always forgive and ask for forgiveness. There is no loss or defeat there. Put your past behind. Very, very important. Every day, every moment, continuously, you need to generate yourself. Uh, you know, the past is history. Do not live in the past. 
give if you had a bad past give that a strong meaning that by that bad past was your teacher now apply the learnings so you know uh, practice living in the present moment don't worry about the future at all because again the past is history the future is mystery the only truth is the present moment make your present awesome the future will automatically be taken care of make your present awesome during really rough times take it one day at a time express uh, you know gratitude uh, they, they, uh, take it one day at a time express gratitude to god and then again one day at a time you know uh, during the uh, uh, covid times every morning i i uh, would uh, wake up and uh, the first thing that i would tell god is that god thank you for keeping me alive and safe today uh, and you know and thank you that i had uh, you gave me one more day and you when you practice i'm going to come to gratitude uh, immediately after uh, you will see how unstoppable how powerful you become pray to god almighty uh, whom or whoever you believe in ask him to show you the way the light ask him to give you the strength the power and see the uh, magic do not fill your mind with any negative data i i i think i mentioned this uh, many times uh, uh, the next thing that i would like to uh, share with you is practicing gratitude uh, and now what is gratitude is that most of the time we complain rather than complaining you know if we start in the morning by focusing before leaving the bed if we you know i have a i i have in my in my ipad i have a i have a gratitude app so every morning when i wake up the gratitude app pops up and uh, you know reminds me uh, that are you prepared for gratitude today and then i write that you know why i am grateful for say for example you don't really need anything to be grateful for as i mentioned the very fact that i am i am alive today the very fact that i that you know all my vital organs are working uh, and the very fact that you know my heart is working the very fact that i can speak the very fact that you know i have such a beautiful office the very fact uh, that have been blessed uh, to have been given the opportunity to speak in front of such beautiful people like you so you know the more uh, we focus the the uh, uh, i am so deeply grateful uh, to my to my parents who gave me birth who, who uh, uh, brought me to this beautiful world who taught me taught me how to talk who taught me how to walk and so the more uh, you experience gratitude in the course of a day you will feel that your entire mind gets filled with abundance so you know the idea is try to practice more and more gratitude in the course of the day little little things and search for gratitude and you will see that it gradually your focus will shift from what you don't have to what you have and and the more you feel that you will remain in uh, you know uh, the a uh, positive abund abundant fulfilled state of mind and the more fulfilled state of mind you will be the more you will see that you will feel that energy you will feel that inspiration and you will absolutely be rocking you will be absolutely awesome so uh, the next is practicing happiness every day beautiful you see you know i always believe that success without happiness is abject failure you know if you if you have if you have the biggest marks if you have the greatest job you have the highest uh, you know biggest money and all that but still you are uh, you know craving every moment craving every day you are grumbling every day not worth it you know you, the whole objective at the end of the life is being happy so you need to again how do you practice happiness uh, you know I, i can give you some tips practice appreciation every day how do you do that so you you uh, need when you meet people you know look at their positive sides uh, so you can uh, just uh, you know share with them that you're looking so pretty today you're wearing such a beautiful shirt uh, the dish that you cooked is absolutely out of the world you uh, i you know i really like your handwriting you have such an like a siska led smile and you know so any time any person whom you meet from today start practicing appreciation practicing love you know so for example for people who are married you know i say a very important part is to communicate to your parents or to your even to your wives uh, your spouses and to your children that i really love you so deeply i am so lucky to have you in my life you are such a good friend to me i really love every moment i am so grateful to god almighty to have you as my partner say this to your parents say this to your wife say this to your children say this to your friends 
and look the, uh, I mean, uh, and experience the magic. So, uh, and the third is uh, practice gratitude every day. So again, so this is another thing which I would invite uh, you to, uh, you know, practice. Uh, the uh, other thing is the power of affirmations. Now, uh, the quality of your thoughts determine the quality of your actions. The quality of your actions determine the quality of your uh, results. The quality of your results determine the quality of your success or failure. And the quality of your success or failure determines the quality of your destiny or destination. So the, the, I give it to you one more time. The quality of your thoughts determine the quality of your actions. The quality of your action determine the quality of your results. The quality of your results determine the quality of your success or failure. The quality of your success or failure determines the quality of your destiny or destination. So the ultimate starting point is the quality of your thoughts. Now, uh, a great way of you know uh, changing your thoughts, because you know uh, just as uh, you know, so we we uh, from the, um, because today uh, time is short, but let me share with you that uh, from the time that we were born, we also take a lot of gar garbage with which our, uh, you know, uh, brain gets negatively conditioned. So what we need to do, we need to have a sanitizer. We need to have a brain sanitizer, which sanitizes out the garbage, the bacteria out of our, uh, you know, thinking system, out of our neuro uh, chemistry, out of our neuro system. And one great way uh, to practice is, you know, affirmation. So it's something like, you know, you practice by telling yourself every morning, I'm proud of myself. I choose what I become. I am likable and fun to be around. I am capable. I choose abundance. I am beautiful. I attract love. I uh, define my worth and my and I am worthy. I love my body as it is today. I am a super achiever. I get the best jobs. I get fantastic marks. I uh, create records. I get gold medals. I am the superstar in my class. So whatever, and you know, you do it in the present moment, and you need to practice this, and uh, you know, miraculously. Uh, you know, our your brain will get conditioned, and when you uh, when you ha start having these new thoughts, your actions will change. When your actions change, your results will change, and when your results change, you will get awesome, absolutely unprecedented success. The power of visualization. Again, you know, uh, you saw this power of visualization in play when I narrated to you uh, <clears throat> the story of Maurice e. Goodman. Maurice visualized. Uh, in spite of a hopeless state, if you read Morris's book, you will get to know that every doctor attending him, uh, you know, gave up and said that this man is not going to live. And uh, hence, you know, but he believed and he visualized that, you know, in nine months time, uh, you know, just before Christmas, I'm going to walk out uh, without any appendage and he ultimately walked out. So visualization is absolutely, absolutely miraculous. You know, all these, uh, because, you know, it's a short webinar. I am uh, connect, uh, you know, covering this in short, but all this is there in this book. <clears throat> and so there are plenty of visualization exercises, uh, you know, and if you on goal achievement on anything, and especially I would urge these students and let me share with you, uh, you know, uh, when I was working with the Bengal cricket team, uh, I made them visualize uh, that they were winning the Ranji trophy. Uh, and uh, let me share with you with some uh, satisfaction. Uh, that during my team, uh, when uh, I think Manoj Tiwari was the captain, uh, they won the uh, you know 50 overs national tournament for the first time. After that, Bengal did not win that tournament anymore. So visualization is very powerful. You can uh, create your visualization scripts with respect to your exam, with respect to your interview, with respect to your relationship, uh, with respect to your uh, relationship with your uh, you know uh, your uh, your teachers. Uh, uh, with respect to enhancing and developing your personality, your communication, your uh, body language, your smartness, everything. Uh, so visualization is a very, very powerful uh, tool. And uh, so developing problem solving skills quickly. Uh, so, you know, uh, from today, welcome any problem, big or small. Tell yourself that leaders had problems for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So the more I practice problem solving, the more I will get better at this. So, you know, I have uh, put forth for yourself a problem solving formula. So that's a new, new thought process, which you must practice. So uh, the point is, uh, now practice these thought processes. What are these? That I believe that there must be solutions and I must find them. The next thought is that even if a solution was not there before, I will be the first person to find, find that. 
and uh, then uh, the thought has to be i am not going to give up searching for a solution till i get uh, one and and i will do whatever it takes to find a solution now all the stories from nelson mandela to arun masina to john nash you know they were all in a manner they were all great problem solvers every crisis to them were was a problem and they applied this problem solving skills you know and subsequently no uh, problem no challenge could be great enough to stop them so uh, three uh, thoughts that you need to uh, practice so immediately as a problem comes before the mind starts getting negative be alert and switch to what is the solution you have to tell yourself a problem comes in and you need to tell yourself what is the solution how can i turn this around how can i turn this uh, problem situation around and one more thing that you need to do is you need to condition and practice your mind and train your mind by spending consciously spending 95% of time exploring solutions and only 5% time on the problem one more time 95% time you spend on finding solutions and only 5% time on the problem and the other thing that you need to continuously tell yourself i am a solution man i am a great problem solver i am a solution man i am a great problem solver uh, now uh, many of us we have you know fear so how do you overcome fear so uh, one uh, thing which i suggest is the, you, you could record these affirmations in your own voice uh, in your mobile phone and listen to them daily every mobile phone has now a smartphone has a, uh, a recording device so it's something like i am brave enough to take chances i can handle anything that comes in my way my setbacks make me stronger i am strong and powerful my struggles are opportunities to grow i am capable of achieving my goals my confidence continues to grow my abilities are limitless i believe in myself i deserve to be happy i release my fear tension and stress i look to my future with hope and happiness i am doing the best i can i am grateful for who i am and you know when you practice this you will see can you see the energy that i have now one of the reasons that i have this energy is because i practice every single uh, uh, you know principle that i am teaching uh, the next is the power of prayer uh, now i go to a kali mandir uh and i get my strength from there you may have your gods so this is my kali mandir which is at baripur shibani peet and i draw a lot of inspiration from there and this is my uh, my mentor uh and he i i have been going to him uh, for over the last 40 years and the other person here uh is the uh, my father my beloved my role model and i uh, lost him uh you know physically uh, he is now resides in the clouds about 6 years back but i find that he is with me every single moment and so which god you pray how you pray it will depend on your all your personal preferences but the point is pray so you know at any point of time uh, when you feel desolate when you feel lonely uh, you know you need confidence you strength you just go and pray pray intensely in front of whichever god you uh, you know you worship and say that god give me the strength give me the power give, show me the way and let me share with you i when i pray i get that and i'm sure that each one of you if you intensely sincerely pray and make praying you know prayer a daily practice you are going to get absolutely amazing uh, miraculous uh, you know results and inspiration uh, the next is uh, the power of the spoken word uh, you know as they say shabdo brahmo and as we have learned that in our shastras the uh, you know Uh, the old sages that whatever uh, you know we, they would say uh, we uh, we knew of a concept called bakko shiddhi so you know so whatever you uh, say whatever you come out with uh, you know that uh, is uh, you need to be very conscious about what comes out in your mouth so uh, remember one simple formula that it has to be powerful and it has to be aligned with uh, you know what you uh, what you desire in your life so uh, you know uh, if you really want to be healthy so every time you need to say that i am healthy i am powerful something like this uh, so our habitual vocabulary is extremely limited if you want to change our lives and shape our destiny we need to consciously select the words we are going to use and we need to constantly strive to expand our level of choice i uh, want us to choose the right words all the time uh, which describe positive emotions rather than those described uh, ne- negative emotions Sim- for example life is a from life is a battle or life is a struggle you can say life is a dance uh, from i don't have time uh, you could say that i have a lot of time from i don't know you can say i'm yet to know 
from that I don't have a money now, you can say that I'm yet to have that money. From saying that I don't have a job now, you can say that I am yet to have a job. From anyone tells you, yeah, say for example, you are uh, down with fever, you say that I'm recovering. So again, you need to be conscious, you need to start practicing, you need to be enthusiastic, energetic, and be serious about practicing. And when you do that, you know, our, our, our words create our experience, life experience, moment to moment. This is absolutely amazing, awesome. I think uh, the king of it. So the power of commitment, you know, just to uh, share with you, uh, you know, before I became a seminar leader, uh, uh, 22, 23 years back, when I first, my first mentor was one Mr. Devu Ghosh, and I attended a life transforming seminar. And at the end of the seminar, I went and told Devu that Devu, uh, you know, I would like to become like you. And then uh, Devu Ghosh, uh, my mentor, my first mentor, he told me that Shomitra, are you, are, are, do you want, do you wish to become uh, like me or <clears throat> you are committed? I said, I didn't understand the difference. And then he mentioned that, you know, show me through that if you wish to become the uh, like me or the number one seminar leader in India or the world, then the uh, what happens is that, you know, you are now excited, you are now energized. At the moment you go out of the door, you know, there's a person called life who is waiting and he will uh, give you all the challenges. And a little while later, you will feel very deeply challenged and you will tell yourself that Ye mera bas ka baat nahi hai. thank you very much. Uh, you know, let me go back to where I uh, where I was. And then he explained that, but yet, if you are committed, then what you do is that when you uh, go out of the door, you will face challenges that in spite and despite these challenges, you will go on, you will go on. And uh, with every new challenge, the challenge will, you know, uh, put forth that unless you develop a new attitude, unless you never develop a new behavior, unless you develop a new skill, you will not be able to overcome the challenges. And what you will do, you will expand your comfort zone and you will reach out to develop that new behavior, to reach out uh, to develop that new attitude and uh, that make that take that new action and develop that new skill. And that is how, uh, you know, and you are not going to give up. You are not going to give up, uh, you know, no matter what, no matter how big the challenge is. And that is how you develop com com commitment by becoming relentless. And if you are committed, there's no force on earth that can, you know, kind of uh, stop you from uh, achieving your goals. So friends, there's a difference between interest and commitment. When you are interested in something, you do not only, uh, uh, you do it only when it's convenient. When you are committed to something, you accept no excuses, only results. So I invite each one of you to live as committed individuals. Anything that comes out from your mouth, you are going to uh, you give whatever it takes to uh, you know, ensure that it happens. And uh, I, I can challenge you that, you know, you will absolutely become uh, world beaters. And now I come to the final part, the faith protocol. So uh, what is the faith protocol? It's the process designed to improve and enhance your mental and emotional capabilities and instill the faith, virtue of faith deep within you, faith in your abilities, your health, yourself, your family, your values, your society and your country. These are a set of daily practices that if my readers practice uh, daily uninterrupted for a period of uh, you know at least six months they are bound to experience a drastic improvement in their mental and emotional fitness and when that happens every area of your life shall be powerfully impacted so what is the faith protocol so it is a, a you know a series of 12 daily rituals so for example the first ritual is meditation uh, how much time do you uh, duration 20 to 30 minutes every day what is the time of practice between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning? What are the expected results? You will feel calmness, feel focused and all that. I had explained a little earlier. Second practice, gratitude exercise and filling up the gratitude journal. Uh, duration is five to eight minutes. Time of practice after waking up in the morning and internally practice gratitude throughout the day while at work. Again, shall experience sustained fulfillment. Third, chanting out the morning affirmations. How much time? Three minutes. You may record these affirmations in your own phone, or in your own voice, in your mobile phone and listen to them. Again, uh, as I mentioned, your Purana thought process will change and give you a powerful thought process. Fourth, physical exercise and pranayama. Uh, how much time? 40 minutes. Ideally during the morning time, both cardio and whole body. If you can do it in the morning, then uh, can't do it in the morning, then do it in the evening. This will help your physical fitness. 
and especially in times of COVID, pranayama is extremely good. It enhances your pulmonary capacity. Next is follow a proper diet, whole day, follow your diet chart, go to your dietitian, get a good diet chart, eat like a champion, follow your diet chart strictly. The quantity and time timing is vitally improved, uh, uh, important. Practice the WCD world-class thinking process that I have uh, mentioned uh, uh, to build an extraordinary psychology. How much time, whole day, what do you do? You know, uh, the uh, WCD process, as it's mentioned here, type it down and put it in your pocket, in a pocket card uh, manner. Uh, you can have it as a screensaver in your laptop and, uh, you know, practice it throughout the day. Practice being in positive emotional states for 60% of the day, whole day. Uh, time of practice throughout the day, whenever you catch yourself in the negative Practice appreciation, gratitude, love, commitment. Practice the problem-solving thinking process when, whenever any problem comes in throughout the day. Uh, print this process and on the opposite side of the WCT pocket card and practice extracting a positive meaning from any negative situation. Also, only focus on things that you can control. Practice goal fulfillment visualization. Three times a day, two minutes, each in the morning, afternoon and evening. Print your goal sheet. The first thing that you need to make your goals, goal sheet and keep it in your pocket. Visualize that you have achieved your goals. Pray to your God daily, three minutes in the morning and before going to sleep. Keep a photograph of your God in your pocket, uh, in your pocket on your wallet. For example, I'm conducting this webinar. I have my God's picture in front of me. Now, this is a ritual. So, you know, through my picture, I get that I feed on uh, the blessings and uh, my I feel absolutely unstoppable. Read some part of an inspirational book, quote, or a video, 15 to 20 minutes or more. Uh, if you get time, especially when you're traveling or uh, you do not have much to do, YouTube has a great collection for books. You can download uh, ebooks of your choice, watch less TV. Mind my words, watch less TV, spend less time on social media. That means essentially Facebook. Uh, practice positive, powerful conversation all throughout the day. Listen while you speak. Change your vocabulary, use powerful words and phrases. Your life is going to. So this is the faith protocol. And uh, you know, what is what will this book teach for students? It will teach you how to develop courage, resilience, commitment, aspiration, concentration, and a bulletproof attitude. All the characteristics that help you build the foundation for an extraordinary, outstanding life and career. How will you achieve it? By practicing the action plan that is mentioned in the book, the life lessons and installing the faith protocol, which I just showed it to you. So you through a set of rituals. What results will you get? Your examination results will drastically improve. Your confidence will skyrocket. You will operate with awesome energy and in the face of any challenge, you will just be unstoppable. Your dream jobs and career will come to you just like this. Now, uh, what will be in offer for teachers? It will help you to reinvent yourself as a teacher and help you to you know, instill these values in your students. In the process, you will be contributing to the students more. You will be contributing to your institutions more and uh, to your nation. So you will completely reinvent yourself as a teacher. So what action, you know, the very important part uh, of this book, I have written there's a chapter that, you know, only reading without action is potential energy. The point is, you know, uh, energy which is unutilized uh, it, uh, and which does not convert into performance uh, will not get converted into results. So uh, to convert your energy or ideas or learnings, you must apply them. And you apply them by taking action. So what action must you take now? Buy this book today and start following the life lessons and action plan. Learn the faith protocol and practice it daily. You can enroll in our online course, installing the faith protocol. That is a separate course where we, like a gym teacher, uh, just as they teach you, you know, uh, push-ups, uh, just as they uh, teach you, uh, you know, uh, uh, exercises, we practically teach you each of the principles so that, you know, you, you uh, develop this faith protocol as a part of yourself. And every institution, if institutional heads are there, must keep this book in your library. And uh, so how to uh, buy this book? So this is the payment link uh, and all that. It's only... Uh, priced at 2.99, and let me also share with you that the entire the entire sales uh, from this book uh, will go on to support the COVID orphans. So we have set up a fund, and uh, we are committed uh, to support the COVID orphans. And uh, with this, I know I, I have come, I have uh, concluded my presentation, and I will take questions and your feedback. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chatterjee. That was truly inspiring, truly moving. Uh, like uh, I think all the all the attendees, I was also absolutely uh, you know listening with rapt attention. It really can be very very life changing. I can certainly uh, say that for myself. And um, we will try to uh, you know practice what you say. The protocol is because many people we listen to uh, talks, we listen to webinars. When it comes to practicing, that's that's where we falter. So this is where we really need to uh, you know. Uh, pick up and practice what we are learning from this webinar. Thank you very much. Absolutely, absolutely inspirational. Look forward to your new book release. And we certainly have multiple copies of this book in our library. I assure you that. And we sincerely look forward to your next book release. And we wish to see you again on our program uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you. Very uh, much. Let's, let's see if there are any questions. Uh, Prem, are there any questions here? I think people have forgotten to ask questions. That might well be the case. <laughs> And um, no, no problems with that, no issues, because we will be uh, looking forward to your questions and we can hand them over to Mr. Chatterjee where he can actually send those answers to you. You know, you can mail him, mail us the questions which you can mail to him in turn. Let, let us have some questions at least. Uh, some, there, uh, is there anyone? Back. Are there any raised hands, Prem? Any raised hands? Some, anybody who wants to... So we invite all participants, if you have any... Uh... You want to know any information or you are you have any question then uh, please raise your hand or please put your question in the chat box here participants if you have any questions then please raise your hand or please put your question in the chat box sir uh, till now we uh, don't have any questions yes, yes sir. any uh, any questions or anything you want to share need not necessarily be questions this is an opportunity to develop your confidence, your communication skill. Anyone? At least let me, I put in so much of an effort. Let me, only Professor Mukherjee had spoken. Anyone? But let some participants speak. We are not seeing any raised hands. Neither are we seeing any questions coming in. But then, you know, don't stop shy asking questions. If you have questions, do raise them. Because you will not get Mr. Chatting every day to answer personally. Sir, Pamoli De ma'am has a, uh, raised a question. How, how can I overcome my personal barriers that can are disrupting my uh, professional progress? Fantastic question. Follow me. Uh, 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 great. And what is the base of strong communication? Uh, very nice. So how can I overcome my personal barriers? Uh, so the first thing I would suggest is uh, that uh, you learn to meditate and practice meditation. Uh, number one. Number two uh, is, uh, you know, I do not know what are your personal barriers. So another thing is that, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, you need to change the meaning. Uh, so you need to get a powerful meaning uh, that, you know, these personal barriers, maybe uh, they are not really uh, barriers. Uh, maybe they are, uh, train, they are uh, you know, challenges uh, to make you even greater. Uh, so you need to practice uh, the, uh, now let me tell you, every barrier can be broke, uh, solved, uh, can be overcome. Uh, so you need to objectively find out a solution <coughs> to those barriers. And that is it. You need to take action. Most of the time, what I see is people complain of a challenge, but they don't take any action. Now, uh, the action needs to be taken. Uh, Obigan Basu. Uh, uh, what is the base of strong communication? Practice, 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 practice. I could not communicate uh, like this earlier, but I was very passionate about uh, you know uh, being a, a good communicator. I model. Model means you know like replicate. I, I replicate my uh, world class mentors. I, I try to be like them. I try to communicate like them. I uh, you know kind of uh, practice their body language. I practice their uh, facial expression. I try to replicate their uh, tone of voice. I try to replicate their vocabulary and, uh, you know, the intense and take every uh, situation in your life, every book interaction, every word, every sentence uh, that you speak, take it as a, com take it as a uh, communication development opportunity. And you need to, uh, you need to uh, be very excited about communicating. The tone of voice uh, in communicating is very important. And uh, uh, again, eye contact is very important. 
and uh, uh, so and, and many person i see uh, they operate from a very low energy tone uh, so you know you need to uh, when you communicate communicate with uh, put a little effort and uh, you know uh, uh, operate with energy confidence dipayan roy uh, what does confidence mean uh, to me uh, confidence means uh, one is that uh, at any situation you know i'll overcome it i can tackle it i can do this uh, and uh, even uh, if that particular situation is difficult even if that situation is challenging even if that situation is something which i am not liking even then uh, you know uh, i back myself uh, that i'll be able to uh, you know uh, uh, overcome it i will be able to success be successful so that is uh, to me uh, what is confidence and again confidence needs to be practiced great uh, so thank you very much uh, polomi obigyan and dipayan for uh, you know kind of uh, uh, asking three absolutely awesome questions anyone else any more questions please go ahead so uh, you know i uh, uh, my uh email the pian roy has raised the hand who is it the dipayan roy pian dipayan you can ask your question yes dipayan unmute him please dipayan roy hello hello yes dipayan you need to unmute yourself Dipayan Roy, sir, so, uh, please unmute your mic. Your you mic has been unmuted. Un he has written, sorry, sir. He is answer is all given. Okay, okay. You asked the question already. There was somebody so, else, I think. Prem, uh, there was somebody else also. Uh, so uh, my email ID is s chatterjee at the rate thecpt dot co dot in. Uh, so if you have uh, any uh, you know question you can write to me also i would want that please give me a testimonial how you liked uh, what you liked out of the webinar what action would you like to take and all that i'll be very happy Prem, and our we have a feedback we have a feedback mechanism right yes sir yes sir we will so be we have got a feedback form so we Excellent. will be able to take your feedback and we can send those to you yes uh, so anyone else uh wants to speak ask any question prem you will need to uh, show the uh, the email address of the strategy on screen at the end of the program yes. so people can take it with them and ask questions later on if they want to dev malya chakravarti ma'am is there i think dev malya is there hi dev malya ma'am No, are you able to hear no it it won't be a ma'am it would be a sir demmalo yes yeah yeah demmalo ah, what is your question demmalo what is your question please unmute yourself demmalo chakravarti please unmute yourself and ask your question please unmute yourself So so probably there, there is some technical issue. Question answer box. Okay, I think uh, there's some problem. The model is unable to unmute for whatever reason. So fine. Uh, thank you so much, uh, all the attendees, for being with us. And I'm absolutely sorry that we have been able to bring a lot of food for thought to you. Uh, Shomitra Babu has absolutely been, you know, absolutely excellent. So I think uh, we need to all give him a give him a standing ovation if they could. Uh, under the given circumstances, Prem, would you give him a round of applause? Can you organize that? Sir, so, yes, digital sir. applause. The digital <laughs> applause. Yes, that is what we have to settle for for the time being. Uh, Prem, is that possible from your end? that will be some token of our appreciation so thank you thank you i can get even if i cannot hear 
I can get all the digital love. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think, there you are. Thank you, Prem. Thank you so much for organizing it. Uh, and it has come in very, very timely. Thank you so much. And it's been raining, you know, like cats and dogs outside here at least. So wonderful listening to you. Thank and you, uh, these are rare opportunities when you get to hear from someone of this, this acclaim, this kind of repute. And uh, let's all read this book. Let's all read them together. And let's also, you know, try to practice all of these principles that the Chatterjee has been so very explicit with. Let's try and practice because it's all lies in the practice. We can all listen to webinars and webinars, but then it all boils down to what we practice really in daily life. And I think he has been absolutely clear about that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chatterjee. I thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart, not, not only you. as a uh, representative from the university, but also as a personal friend. And thank you for mentioning that before you started your discourse. Uh, I am afraid perhaps Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir has had to leave the meeting because he has got, as you can understand, different preoccupations. So on behalf of the university, on, on his behalf, and on behalf of my personal self and all the others present, let me thank you once again, thanking you profusely for what you said. And it won't be too long before we have you again on our show. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you absolutely so much, so very much. Thank you. Thank you very Wish everybody a very good time and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we will.